in talking about the science of homes, which is what this channel is all about, it's hard to not talk about radon. Radon is something that almost everybody knows is a problem. It is a gas that comes out of the ground. A lot of people out there you'll find are radon deniers, which is kind of like being a Holocaust denier. Um, if you're one of those, feel free to not watch this video. But it's like a lot of other things that are invisible, dangerous for you to breathe. So don't do it. When we built this forever home, which is my family's home that hopefully we're going to hand down through generations, it's built to be a hundred year house, it is about as airtight as you could possibly build. That's good. Everyone should be building that way if you really want to control the science of your home. But one of the side effects of that is the reason radon builds up in your house is because the house holds the things that come out of the ground underneath it. So we didn't want to do that. First thing that we did was obviously make sure that we limit the amount of things that come up out of the ground. We have a wrap, a plastic sheet that's about 15 mil underneath the slab that is totally airtight. Even with that, you are going to have radon come up into your house. And in fact, we, once we had sealed up the house and made it airtight, but before we had hooked up the Fantech radon system, it, we're experiencing higher than average radon levels. I would bet that any house that's built nowadays, which all houses are being built more airtight now than before, every one of them is experiencing higher radon levels. The white pipe you see behind me with the bulb around it, that's the active radon mitigation system that I have installed on our family's forever home. In this video, we're going to talk all about what the radon system looks like, why ours is a little bit interesting and it has a bunch of extra features and bells and whistles on it because in some cases of some limitations that we had and because in some cases because we're trying to control for things that most people wouldn't think about. So we're going to try and give you some extra questions to ask about your radon system if you're having one built for you. Um, but I'm going to show you through our system which I have installed myself and which Fantech helped us to kind of set up and figure out how, what we needed and how it should work. So we're going to dive pretty deep here. This is not your typical radon system video, but uh, hopefully the nerdy part of you will really enjoy this. Here we go. The radon system pipe goes into the slab here in the middle of the house because I wanted it to be able to suck equally on all parts under the slab. That's really important. It comes up here and it leads to my sensor. This is where I monitor whether this thing is on or not. What I've got here is half an inch of depressurization, half an inch of water column. That's kind of a lot. And you'll see that I've got the fan running so low you can barely hear it outside. So it comes up, takes these turns. Obviously, we've sealed at all the joints just like you would with a pressure system because this is technically a pressure system. And we're going over into the next crawl space where there is a geometry problem that I will show you. The pipe comes out into the other crawl space and goes down in order to go up again. This will fill with water completely if we don't take care of it, which is why this drain right here becomes very important. It is leading to the condensate pump, just like the ERV and the dehumidifier in this space are. Why didn't I just go straight outside with this thing when I first had the chance? Well, because all of construction is a series of compromises. There is a deck out there and there's no way to do that either. So this is what you have to do, and you can use little tricks like this to mitigate, to predict and prevent any problems that you'll have with moisture. The fan lives outside the enclosure because if it, something goes wrong and it starts blowing air that's got a lot of radon in it somewhere besides this duct, it happens outside the house. That's really important. So here we come out. I have another one of these drain ports because there will be some moisture coming down through the fan, even though I've used a diverter here. So this giant stack is about 22 feet long. I actually installed this by myself. I do not advise that, especially for people who do not like ladders very much, like me. Uh, it didn't feel good the next day, but it did get done. That was, that was a fun thing. So there is a drain at the bottom of this because most of the water is going to fall straight down this, come into this tube. Some of it is going to find its way down through this. It's going to go into this tube. These tubes are really important and interesting, and I just wanted to make a point about this. The water that's in this is never going to be frozen on the get-go. We're in Atlanta. If I was in Alaska, I might worry a little bit about that, in which case you wouldn't have condensate because you would have planned that your radon system would have gone straight from the underside of the slab up through the house and poked out through the top just a little bit through the attic. 
in which case you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. You don't have to worry about the condensate because the condensate would all run straight back down to the underside of the slab, which is the best way to do it. We were not able to do that because of many technical factors that uh, you can watch back through the over 100 videos that we've got on this build alone. All we need to know is that construction is always complicated. Things are gonna be a little bit messier than you think. And so you just need ways to think through and plan and then change and think around corners when things don't go your way, which is what we did here. Not a problem. So this all will work perfectly. And in fact, it is already because we have the Air Things Wave inside. It's the Wave Pro is the model that I've got in there, which monitors a bunch of other stuff aside from just radon. But the radon level we've taken from before we activated the active radon system, back when it was just a passive radon system, which is something that some people try to do before they hook up a fan. It's just a pipe that goes up through the roof. That did not work for us. We had extremely elevated levels of radon after the house was made so airtight. Then we kicked on the radon fan. We tuned it to the right level so that I now have the same level of radon in the house as exists in the atmosphere around, which is always gonna be generally less than one picocurie per liter of air. You want it to be less than four if you're just gonna follow the standard. As a dad, I want it to be whatever it is outside, which is close to zero. When you've got water draining out through this, you want to, just like you do in the case of hooking into the sewer with your sinks or your toilets uh, at, inside the house, have a trap built into it. It's not because you don't want sewer gas coming back up through. What we want is, we could do this a couple different ways. You could just pipe this and this together into a Y and then go straight out through the bottom. What that would do is any water coming through this would drain immediately, likewise on the other side. And what you would get is pressurized air pushing down into this side of the hose and then getting sucked up into this side of the hose because of course the fan is between those two hoses. So you'd get this feedback loop and that would not be good. That would defeat some of the purpose of the power that we're putting into this fan. It would not be sucking right on front of this lab. It would be sucking air that it's been sucking for hours and hours. So you build a trap into both sides of this, but that's not all. Now that I've got a trap here and a trap here, which this is just a simple knot that I tied in it, not very tight. Um, in the summertime, we're not gonna get a lot of moisture building up in this because this thing is not gonna get cold at night and then have moisture condensing on the inside of it. So this will dry out. So in the summertime, I won't have the water there and it will do what I just described, that feedback loop. So what I'm gonna have to fix this with, and by the way, there's another trap at the very bottom, uh, just to make sure that bugs don't start crawling up in there. I have these little pieces of plastic that I'm gonna install in this because it all comes down to little tiny pieces of plastic when you build the way that we're building right now. Everything matters. And the more tight and rigid and high performance a home is, the more tiny things start to matter. So this is something that I've also got on the condensate line of the mini split behind me. It's called a check valve. It's basically a one-way valve, just like you've got in your body for your blood circulation. It's gonna allow water to go through down, but not for anything to come back up. And that's important only here so that I can maintain the air seal on this. So when water builds up, I do want it to be able to drain out, but if air is trying to get back in there because of the nature of the system, it's not gonna be able to do that. One other thing about this fan, and by the way, it is on right now and you can't hear it. I'm gonna get really, really close and then I'm gonna to touch my microphone to the fan housing. Can you hear that? Yeah, just barely. The way to tell if a radon fan is on or not is to touch it and you can feel the very faint vibration. This is a highly efficient fan and I'm running it at a level that I'm sure works, number one, because we tested it months ago. If you have been subscribed to our channel, you saw that we tested it um, with Fantech. They came out and ran a, a great radon test to see how much power we would have to put into the fan in order to create the pressure difference that we want. You wanna create a certain amount of suction. And in that case, we were looking for like 10 pascals, not very much, not even a 10th of an inch of water column. Right now I've got half an inch of water column. How were we able to do that? We had to run that fan during the test all the way up to 100% just to get 10 or 12 pascals. Well, the problem that I identified at the end of that video was that this right here was unsealed, which 
has nothing to do with the radon system. But just like a water heater and a fireplace and a kitchen exhaust fan all have very close relationships if you study the dynamics of home performance, a radon fan and this seam right here outside the house, four feet above the dirt, are very closely related. When this fan pulls on this pipe, the pipe pulls on the underside of the slab. The underside of the slab is gravel. We've got about six inches of gravel under there. It's a very nice big pad. And that is sucking on the slotted drain tile that's on the inside and the outside of the footing. That's our forma drain system. And those two are connected to each other. So the fan now is sucking on the outside drain, which is also embedded in a burrito of rocks and geofabric all the way up to here. And so the rock wool that was behind this was able to transmit air behind this FRP and be sucking along the entirety of that seam, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's enough that I wasn't able to get the full power, the full effectiveness of this fan without sealing that. So this is not for aesthetics. This is for this. Grace would like me to address why none of this is insulated. And it's because when you think about the heat flow, and the moisture that's going to be related to that, we're not worried about any of this necessarily as long as you can take care of the condensation that does happen with these pipes. So these pipes are the replacement for insulating this to within an inch of its life to make sure that the temperature of the pipe itself is the same as the temperature of the air that we're sucking underneath the slab through it. So it's really, a, you can do either way. This way happens to be a lot cheaper and a lot less time intensive. If you like what this system can do, it's pretty easy to plan it into any new build that you're doing. It's somewhat more difficult to do on an existing home because of what's underneath the slab. It might just be packed dirt, which is really hard to suck air through. But you can do it if you use the testing protocol that we showed you in the previous Fantech video, which I'm linking in the description below. So please do comment if you have more things to add about radon systems. There's a bunch of different kind of tweaks and little upgrades that you can do to it to make it work better. This is going to work perfectly well for my family for decades, as long as we maintain it, as long as we continue to monitor it. Please do make sure that you uh, subscribe and like this video. Tune in next time.